This is Dr. Mimi Lamb from Metro Health Medical Center, and I would like to explain the helpful and harmful aspects of angiotensin II. Angiotensin II is formed when renin catalyzes the production of angiotensin I, which is then acted upon by angiotensin converting enzyme, or ACE, to produce angiotensin II. A2 is a multifaceted hormone that acts on two types of receptors. It serves several functions in maintaining volume and osmolar homeostasis. One way to make sense of its seemingly unrelated actions is to think about them in the context of the body's response to volume depletion. So here are five ways that A2 can help you out when you're volume depleted. First, it constricts arterioles, especially renal efferent arterioles. This supports arterial blood pressure and shunts blood away from the kidneys to protect vascular beds that cannot tolerate dips in blood flow, such as the coronary, pulmonary, and cerebral circulations. By decreasing renal blood flow and GFR, A2 helps to minimize potential fluid losses through the kidneys. One of the ways that angio 2 decreases GFR, besides simply decreasing renal blood flow, is through its action on mesangial cells. These cells, which can be seen here sitting between the capillary loops of the glomerulus, contain myofilaments that allow them to contract and wrap around glomerular capillary loops. This constricts the loops, helps to decrease GFR, and thus minimizes fluid losses through the kidney. However, at the same time as it decreases renal blood flow, A2 actually helps to keep GFR from falling too much. Normally, about 20% of renal plasma flow passes through the glomerular basement membrane and becomes filtrate. So GFR divided by renal plasma flow produces the so-called filtration fraction of 0.20. Remember that A2 affects primarily the efferent arteriole in the glomerulus. If the efferent constricts, blood backs up behind that constriction and increases glomerular capillary hydrostatic pressure and increases the percent of plasma that gets filtered. To illustrate this with numbers, suppose that in the normal state, renal plasma flow is 600 mL per minute and GFR is 20% of that or 120 with a filtration fraction of 0.20. If the afferent arteriole constricts, as would be expected with volume depletion, and increased sympathetic activity, we might expect renal plasma flow and GFR to fall proportionately to 400 and 80 mLs per minute, respectively, still maintaining a filtration fraction of 0.20. However, if the efferent arteriole also constricts because of angiotensin II being around, the percent of plasma filtered increases so that we might expect a renal plasma flow of 400 and a GFR of 100, a filtration fraction of 0.25. Thus, the efferent constriction induced by A2 helps to preserve GFR and the ability to get rid of BUN, creatinine, etc., despite a decrease in renal plasma flow. NGO2 also helps to increase sodium and water reabsorption in volume depletion in order to conserve the remaining ECF volume. It does this by directly increasing proximal tubular sodium reabsorption, and it also increases aldosterone secretion, resulting in increased sodium reabsorption in the collecting tubule, and it increases ADH secretion, stimulating water reabsorption in the collecting tubule. A2 also increases thirst, which helps to replace fluid losses, and it increases prostaglandin synthesis, resulting in more production of intrarenal vasodilating prostaglandins such as PGE2 and PGI2. The purpose of this action seems to be simply to modulate or dampen the effects of strong vasoconstriction due to sympathetic activity in A2 itself, and thus to keep the vasoconstriction from getting out of hand. So to summarize what happens in volume depletion, Low cardiac output and filling pressures activate the baroreceptors and increase the activity of the sympathetic and renin-angiotensin systems, resulting in upregulation of angiotensin II synthesis. A2 then helps out 
because it supports blood pressure via vasoconstriction. It protects GFR despite decreased renal blood flow by constricting efferent arterioles and increasing filtration fraction. It helps to conserve remaining ECF volume by increasing sodium and water reabsorption. It increases thirst to help replete ECF volume, and it increases prostaglandin synthesis to help modulate vasoconstriction. These actions allow further fluid losses to be kept to a minimum and also allow repletion of ECF volume. However, there are also potentially harmful effects of angiotensin II, and here are four examples. First, it can produce or worsen hypertension by increasing vascular resistance. This is seen, for instance, in renal artery stenosis, where decreased blood flow through the stenotic renal artery is transmitted downstream to the afferent arterioles. This decrease in blood flow stimulates the production of renin by the cells of the afferent arterioles, resulting in production of angiotensin II and leading to an increase in blood pressure. Angiotensin II contributes to salt and water retention in states such as congestive heart failure. This happens because the low cardiac output of the failing heart activates baroreceptors and results in increased activity of the renin, angiotensin, and sympathetic nervous systems just like what happens in volume depletion, except here the salt and water retention are maladaptive, and instead of helping to correct volume depletion, they cause an increase in extracellular volume and produce edema. A2 can also contribute to renal and myocardial fibrosis via the action of growth factors such as TGF-beta and via increased extracellular matrix production. And by its effect on EPO, it can actually result in overproduction of red cells or erythrocytosis, which in some situations can have harmful effects. Thus, like many things in medicine and in life, angio 2 has both a good and a bad side, and depending on the context, it can either be a helpful part of the protective neurohumoral response to volume depletion, or it can contribute to cardiovascular and renal damage. In a later video, we will look at the good and bad effects of the class of drugs called angiotensin-converting enzyme inhibitors, or ACE inhibitors.